way it goes around this place. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Alcorn State, brought to you by Submarine House. We talked about a couple of different guys, but how about Byron Joshua? Leads the team in minutes played and assists, second in scoring at 10.6 per game. And the head coach is Landon Bussey. This is first time as a head coach here at Alcorn State. 14 and 4 was his league record a year ago when they appeared in the National Invitational Tournament, more commonly known as the NIT. And the Dayton Flyers, who incidentally will be wearing their dark colors here tonight with Alcorn State in white. We look at the starting lineup. Some familiar names, still a couple of key guys that haven't got back into the lineup. But keep an eye on Mongolian Mike, the freshman who plays at the point, which is not necessarily his natural position. Those lineups brought to you by the Submarine Hot. And they will miss shots against this Dayton defense. They have to rebound and get second chance. Tonight's opening tip-off brought to you by Premier Health. The ball is up, and we are underway this Tuesday evening. Mike Sherjans on the right-handed dribble. They work very hard defensively, says Anthony Grant. And there's an example right away and an opportunity at the other end. The ball is lost out of bounds by Look, Joshua. You see Alcorn State's strategy on the defensive end right away. They're going to get up and they're going to pressure Dayton's guards. Anybody handling the basketball, they're going to challenge them and say, okay, you're playing point, you're playing off. Who's going to handle the basketball with me in your kitchen? No points, one turnover. And a foul called in underneath as Holmes was looking to get to the iron and net. You're going to see a lot of that. First of all, uh, we saw a little traveling music there for uh, <laughs> Tamani Kamara. Apparently they've changed the rules and you can now take a couple steps. Why not? Why not? Um, but you're going to see Deron Holmes down low all night. I mean, the Wyoming game, they just beat Wyoming to death in the paint. And Deron Holmes was the guy who led that charge. I mean, they fed him and fed him and fed him. And he he played a physical game, athletic, and was really able to dominate the low post, which he's pretty much done over the last six games. you got to give this kid a lot of credit. He is stepping up in his sophomore year, showing his physical talents. And the Dayton Flyers are stepping up and applying some full-court pressure. I like that. That's Coach Grant Hale, really. You're going to press me? I'll press you a little bit, too. Montgomery to Joshua. Just underway, University of Dayton Arena. Flyers winners of two in a row, four of their last five, and they start conference play next week with Duquesne. Nice little one-hand floater for Montgomery. Tough shot. Montgomery able to throw that one in over top of his players. Holmes the second down on the floor, and the foul is called. So you mentioned his play defensively in particular. He's 10 of 15 from the floor, had 24 points. That's his fifth time this season when he has scored above 20. His average right about 17. Baseline inbounds. Charjean to the opposite corner. Kamara into Holmes in the basket. The most impressive part of that play by Deron Holmes was the catch. That was a really, really tough pass to catch. He not only caught it, kept his feet settled down, was able to go up to the rim under control. Excellent catch. Wade, the lefty for three. Oh. Got it. Oh. Over top of Deron Holmes. And Holmes got him a little bit on the arm. No foul. That shows you how close he was on that jump shot. Charge jumps to answer. That one's strong. Jennifer Alcorn State to take their first lead of the evening. Wait. How high? Looks off the screen. And we've got a foul called on Kendall. Yeah, Jeremiah Kendall came up and gave a little nudge with his uh, lower body. Can't do that. you got to keep your feet settled down. No movement at all. This day in college basketball, you can't move a little bit on that screen. Watch him come up and just nudge him a little bit, and a little arm comes out. In old days, that wasn't even, nobody even broke a sweat over that play. Now, that's a foul. 
Officials tonight, James Breeding, Lee Castle, and Jeff Pong. Two minutes in. Mustafa Amfield. Good rotation outside the arc. 15 still to go on the shot clock. Kick out for three. Nope. Good look. Wouldn't go. Alcorn stayed really aggressive on the defensive end there. Out challenging passing lanes, challenging dribblers, trying to do their own variety of Dayton defense by just going out and getting in people's you know, kitchens and really trying to force some turnovers and some pressure and tough shots. Speaking of tough shots. Monty Camaro got lucky there. He, he pushed him a little bit on that shot. Could have been easily called a foul and now another Dayton turnover. It's been a bumpy start for the Flyers. Just one and five away from home this season. But after tonight, eight home games remaining. All of those, of course, in Atlantic 10 play. I mean, it's, it's like December. And you got eight games left at home. I mean, that, wow. It's not even Christmas yet. That one will fall. Charjean brings the ball quickly into the front court. Tough pass by Mike. He was lucky to get that completed. A little sleight of hand. He kind of lobbed it in to Duran Holmes. Lucky the defender was out of position. I mean, Mike comes up. He's looking to get underneath right now. And he kind of just flipped it. Lucky the defender wasn't where he should have been, which is defending that against that pass. Mike is barely able to get that in and draws the foul on Holmes. Holmes again won't go, gets his own rebound, tries it a second time. How about three? No. Well, it's not for lack of effort. And then a tie-up on the rebound, and the arrow favors the visitors in white. Wow. I mean, the date is showing right now how big and physical they are down low. Deron Holmes goes up, misses once, goes up again, misses twice, goes up again, misses a third time. This time now it's Kamara. He misses. Now jump ball. By the way, Dwight, when you, in the old days, when I played, you go in the locker room, you compare rebounds, see who had the most rebounds in the team. None of those missed rebounds, missed layups, rebounds count. Okay. You can't miss your own layup. Okay. And get a rebound and count. Because you could theoretically have tons of rebounds. Because I just throw, you just throw it up against the yeah. last like five times and catch it back and get a rebound. Yeah, fair enough. Important safety team. <laughs> well, a sluggish start for the Dayton Flyers. Alcorn hasn't really been able to light the flame offensively, which keeps us right where we are in a one point game. Home spin move and the two handed flush. That's where all front takes to struggle all night. They don't have an answer for Duran Holmes one on one in the post. Well, nobody does. I mean, he's too good down there. I'll tell you, though, I I'm impressed with Alcorn State's defense. They're really getting out at the Flyers. I think it's causing Dayton some problems on the offensive end. A lot of what Dayton does and disrupts other teams' offenses. That's a very tough shot of Duran Holmes. Wow. Wade's effort is short, and it's a transition opportunity for the Dayton Flyers. Mustafa Amzil is fouled along the baseline, and we're going to take a break. Early going, 15-37 remaining here in the first half. It's been cool. And I thought the strength that they played down low with all their big guys, they just really outclassed Wyoming in the paint. And that's it. You know, that's, a, that's a pretty good strategy for Dayton until they can get Smith and Elvis back is to really play well down low and solid defense. And you could beat a lot of teams in the A-10 doing just that with this offensive inside talent that Dayton puts out there every night. Flyers on top. And there's foul called. Holmes called for the foul, his first. Byron Joshua, smallest player on the court, playing the role of water bug tonight. Just kind of passed his way through all that tall corn. He got himself to the rim. But a good out-of-bounds play by Alcorn State. Easy jump shot, banged it down. 
Pass in underneath. Kept alive. And foul is called as Homsteel was looking to drive the paint. That time with Darius Marshall for Alcorn with the reach in and the foul on Omzeal. And Alcorn State already with seven fouls. Shooting the one and one. Hmm. I have a feeling that uh, Coach Bussey for Alcorn State is saying, uh, are you sure about this? H. Dayton shooting three of nine from the floor, but they've hit all three free throw attempts. So he says. <laughs> the broadcaster's jinx. By the way, I think the fact that Alcorn State has seven fouls is an indication they're having some trouble with Dayton's athletic ability and their size. Because when you go against a team that's big and fast and quick and athletic, you tend to use your hands a little bit more than you should, and you get whistled for fouls. Holy smokes. Big long distance three from Montgomery. And I tell you what, he uh, he showed in, in warm ups, he's not afraid to shoot from anywhere. Apparently, we have to check that uh, backboard for some cracks. And he was draining some. How about that? Up and over his head for home. Deron Holmes down low, strong play. And he did the, uh, you know, the power lifter pose as he went down the court. Good rebound. Strength that this young man did not have last year. He had a lot of athleticism, but he's added some strength in the weight room to his game. Bruton on the dribble, 10 on the shot clock. His opposite number, Blakeney. Boy, good defense. Long distance shot, but not for three. Just inside the arc, doesn't go. Rebound, put back. And another opportunity, blocked from behind by Kamara. Now the shot for three. Nope. And down goes Charjean. And Anthony Grant right now pleading for a foul call on Alcorn State because Mike just got knocked to the ground. They both, two players went up for that rebound. Daryl Jordan, number 20 for Alcorn State, Mike. And Daryl Jordan just kind of clubbed Mike in midair after the offensive rebounds. Hey, we talked about it in the open. One thing this Alcorn State team does well is they rebound the basketball on the offensive end. That time, three or four offensive rebounds. But watch Mike just tell you we didn't catch it. But Mike at the end, two teams, Jordan and Mike went up for that rebound. And while Mike was in midair, Alcorn State, number 20, Jordan, kind of hit him, knocked him off balance, which is why Mike fell to the ground and the ball leaked out out of bounds. And ends up being a team offensive rebound for Alcorn State. So possession stays. That's like, that's four extra possessions, essentially, in this one trip. Down four. Five on the shot clock. Joshua trying to find a way in. Charjamps knocks the ball away. He's called for the foul, and he's not the least bit happy about it. Well, whether it's a good foul or a bad call, this is a that's a freshman mistake. And Mike's going to learn from this. He's a talented kid and a smart kid, too. But when in, in a situation under five seconds on the shot clock, you can't even be, you can't be looking to get in there with your hands. You've got to keep your hands out, especially when you have a 6'8 to 5'11 advantage. With the guy you're checking, make him shoot over top of you under in under four seconds from the shot clock. It's going to be a tough shot. Don't bail him out with the foul. I think that's that's just a playing time and a growth mistake from Mike. Three point lead for the Flyers. Diagonally into the corner. Alcorn State doubling the post as much as they can. Dayton's got to reverse it and find the open shooter. From the corner, shot for three, around the iron, off the glass, in the way. And quickly forward is Wade. You can see Alcorn State, the other strategy they have coming in this game, every time they get a missed shot, they're going to push the court push the court, and try and hit score in transition. That's a smart move because if you just kind of walk it up and try and play half-court defense against Dayton, a bunch of possessions, you're in trouble. This Dayton defense is too good. You got to try and get down and transition and beat them before they get set. Second tie up here in the early going, and the possession arrow this time favors Dayton, wearing their navy and red traditional road uniform. Alcorn State 
all over the country. Just need time to do laundry. <laughs> They have traveling, uh, travel with their washer and dryers. It's crazy how much traveling they've done. I mean, 11 straight games on the road. Uh, you know, that just makes me tired thinking about it. Good pressure. Jarjan to Kamara on the dribble. Ball slips off his thigh. He's able to get it back. Puts up a shot. That goes. And a foul. And that's the power of Tamani Kamara down low. His athletic ability married with his strength. He was able to fight his way through that foul and get up and still score the two points. He is really a strong post player. He just has that presence about him in the post. Completes the old-fashioned three-point possession. Kamara against Wyoming, 17 points, nine boards, forces, two steals, and two blocks and was praised, as you've already touched upon, for his defensive play. He kept Hunter Maldonado, leading scorer for Wyoming, to six points on two of 11 shooting. Two of 11. I guarantee you those two that he made, he probably had his eyes closed, too, because when you're playing against Deron Holmes, you're doing a lot of praying when it's your time to shoot. I'm not good at math, but two out of 11 doesn't sound very hot. It's not good. Dayton in a zone, forcing... Alcorn State to adjust to it. Nice okay. entry pass underneath. Yep. Nice. Came to his zone. Get a 30-second shot clock violation. Excellent call by Anthony Grant. Dayton will swap. So there you have it. That's history. It is history. Now Alcorn State comes out with a little one, three, one full three-quarter court pressure. Slow Dayton down a little bit. Dayton gets a good jump shot from the corner, and here we go with the with the rebound. You know, Alcorn State, as being as good of an offensive rebounding team as they are, you think they'd be a good defensive rebounding team. They are not. They they give up a lot of offensive rebounds themselves. And uh, you saw Dayton really capitalize on that in the last couple trips. Tough shot. Good offensive rebound. And it won't go. Another offensive rebound. And another offensive rebound. And a foul. Three extra possessions. Look, that's Alcorn State's game. I mean, against Dayton, you're going to get tough shots. This team is going to say, okay, we're going to get tough shots like this one. We're going to be our 5'11 point guard throw up over two six ten guys but you know what we're going to crash the glass and we do that as good as anybody that we think we play so we're going to crash the glass and we're going to get two three four extra possessions every time down marshall drops the first and it's not a bad strategy i mean it's hard it's hard to score against date in a half court offense and so you got to have something. Just going out and saying, okay, we're going to score 70 points against Dayton running our offense, that's prob you're probably going to lose. The best thing you can do is say, look, it's going to be tough, but everybody has got to be dialed into the offensive rebounds. And now again, Alcorn State coming out with a little full quarter trapping type of a zone pressure, just really trying to make Dayton take some time off the clock with the lack of guards, make it a little more difficult for them to get into an offense. Well, nope. foul go against Dayton. Alcorn State also dropping back into a little bit of zone, and Dayton penetrated, kicked it over to Mustafa, uh, Mustafa Amziel, and he is called for the charge. Let's see what it looks like here. Goes hard to the rim. Wow, oh, boy. Looked like there was some movement there in the Alcorn State player. I think Amziel did not get a favorable call. Sixteen, ten, eight, the largest lead of the game for Dayton. Quick hands. Brea. Blakeney working turns, puts the shot up, it won't go, but he's fouled. That was all athletic ability by Blakeney. Turned around on the post, he had good defense. Alcorn State had good defense on him, but that time Blakeney just hung in the air longer than the defender. He was able to move the ball around, hang in the air as the defender started to 
go back towards the ground. Blakeney was still up in the air and able to move his, the ball around and get a shot. Can't get the first free throw to drop. Hey, Dwight, I say this almost every game. Musava Amzil, boy, he is a key to Dayton's success this year. He has got to play well. He has all the talent that you would expect of a player who's been, you know, preseason third team All Atlantic Ten last year, and, and just his the shots that he's made. That's a young man. If he can just consistently put it on the board, offensively and defensively, this Dayton team is a heck of a lot better. Seven point advantage. Good hustle play for Alcorn State to stay in. Marshall, there's an awkward shot that goes up by Montgomery. It won't fall. And Brea into the front court. Awkward is being kind, Dwight. That was a <laughs> tough, terrible shot. Not a great pass. A turnover flyers. Another turnover by Date. Oh, boy. That, that's a that's a foul, but it's a frustrating foul on the Flyers. You know why? Because down low, I mean, Ladarius Marshall had zero chance to make that shot. He just threw that ball up. I mean, he was, and, and, and Dayton was in good position down low. It's just the reach in, the body contact bailed him out, and he threw it up at the rim. Had zero chance to make that shot. It wasn't even going to be a shot. But under the rules, that's a foul. Free throws good. Second is strong. And the pressure again by Alcorn State challenging Dayton to handle the basketball and take a little time off the shot clock every possession, forcing them to be very efficient on the offensive end at the same time, jumping up and passing lanes like that and making steals. At the other end, oh boy. <laughs> acrobatic effort to block this shot. Doesn't come off, but the rebound goes the way of Dayton. And then Brea's pass is turned over. And at the other end, the block. And then another block. Oh, great effort to try and prevent that layup. Two more offensive rebounds by Alcorn State, but great effort by Dayton not to give up on that. Would you see the turnover bug biting Dayton again? They turned the basketball over too much. Just turned it over too much. And that time gave Alcorn State extra possessions, multiple extra possessions. Six turnover One. here in the first half. Right. Tough shot. Oh. Well, that found time fell kindly for Holmes. Happy holidays. That was a present ra gift wrapped. A gift wrap dunk in two points and an offensive rebound to Duran Holmes. But that time, Date did not play well on the off court offense. A forced tough shot at the buzzer. Good block there. Athleticism is on full display right now by the Dayton Flyers. And this is not a pretty game, but it is interesting. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on in this game. I mean, watch the drive here. And just the, you have no chance. Keeping it close. Dayton led by as many as eight. You talked about their turnover troubles. The other problem that's shown up in the non-conference schedule is their inability to hold a lead. Right. They'll build double-digit leads. And Wyoming came back from 14 down. And the reason for that is turnovers and bad shots. A, a Dayton took too many bad shots against Wyoming. That's a good shot by Kobe Brea with a pump fake and freeing himself up. Alcorn State, not bad defense. Forced Kobe Brea to pump fake and put the ball on the floor before he got the three. But he was able to put it down. Now Dayton slides back into a 1-3-1. See if they can trap and cause a turnover for Alcorn State. Well, Bray went for 10 points and 4 assists in 28 minutes against Wyoming on Saturday. Well, it has been, and as we talked about at the top, no home games to this stage for Alcorn State. We talked about Alcorn State offensive rebounds and their ability to rebound. 13 offensive rebounds a game, which is impressive. They have 10 this half. Alcorn State with 10 offensive rebounds this half. I guarantee you the topic 
in the Dayton locker room at halftime is going to be, gentlemen, block out and rebound the basketball. Ten on the shot clock. Kamara, little fingertip roll with the left. Little pick and roll that time. Alcorn State played good defense, but against Dayton, you got to play good defense for full 30 seconds. Breakdown in the end gave an easy shot for Kamara off the pick and roll. Now Dayton back in that 1-3-1. One, one. Looking to put a little pressure, disrupt Alcorn State on the perimeter. Maybe get a little trap in the corner if they can get it. Out of the right wing, Joshua. He'll give it to Montgomery. Three-point effort doesn't go. Ball's knocked down. Falls kindly on the bounce to the visitors, but then lost out of bounds. Real close to Alcorn State's 11th offensive rebound. That ball was kicking around. Alcorn State had the chance to get it back. Quickly into the front court. Entry pass. Turn, shot, and it's a nice gentle finish for Kamara. And you saw what he did with his left hand, just cleared out the defender. Defender was going to try and go up and block his right-handed jump hook. Kamara wisely used his offhand, his left hand, to clear out the arm of the defender and get an easy little turnaround. Smart play inside. Joshua working in front of the flyer bench. He'll give it to Montgomery. There's a long-distance shot he's afraid to take. That one doesn't go. But a little follow-up effort from about 12 feet. Joshua finishes. Andre Montgomery is not afraid outside. He has it. His shots have not looked good, but the trigger is still greased, and he is still pulling it. Pump fakes on the three-point attempt. Gives it up. Long distance three is strong. Good rebound. Shot is up off the glass. And the shot is good by Mustafa, excuse me, Mustafa Amsil. And enough is enough, says the referee. The technical foul has been called. I think Coach Bussey a little frustrated the fact that it's a 10 plus to 5 foul difference between his team and Dayton, especially that time. Dominic Bruton was down low, had Mustafa Amzil blocked out, but Mustafa Amzil was able to jump over top of him, get that offensive rebound, and put it back in without fouling. And I think Coach Bussey was saying that looked like a foul to him. And by the way, they're doubling us up on the fouls. And they time to catch up. Still pleading his case. He's trying to get his money's worth. I mean, if you get the technical, better squeeze all the change out of it you can. 12-point advantage. That is the largest lead of the game. Dayton, by the way, has hit five of their last six from the field. And they're nearing that 48% uh, conversion rate. With Jumani Kamara is tough out there at the top of the 1-3-1 one, because one, you got to get it over if you want to reverse court you got to get it over his long arms and his 6-8 frame and his athletic jumping ability and that's how you beat a 1-3-1 one, one, you reverse the court but it's hard to do that with Kamara out there and he's so quick for a big guy cross court pass stolen by Amsil and a high flyer at the other end no it won't count Charjamps called for the foul. Great, great pass by Mike. Alley leads down low, but wasn't able to control his body. The turnover and a quick out, outlet to, by Mustafa Amziel and Mike with a nice head up. Alley oop, but just wasn't able to control his body long enough and get out of the way of that defender. Charge called. Nearing the four-minute mark to play here in the first half. And not hitting outside Montgomery, but from inside 10 feet, he's good. There's a lesson to be learned there. 
they get easier the closer you get to the bucket. Oh, oh. Great pass, wide open. And no doubt what Holmes was going to do with that pass. Starting to see breakdowns in the Alcorn State defense. They came out. I thought they were playing excellent, aggressive. But you know what? Dayton just wears you down. I mean, they're physical. They're a big team. It's tough. I mean, it's getting, you're starting to see Alcorn State maybe through fatigue. Starting to make mistakes on the defensive end and giving Dayton easy shots. An open look for Bruton is converted. That brings back to a single-digit deficit. Underneath it, Kamara, opposite side. Shot is up 4-3, won't go. Kamara gets the rebound again after Brea's long-distance effort wouldn't go. But this one will from Blakeney. Nice job by Dayton that time getting their own offensive rebound and really calmly just moving the ball all around. It is an offensive rebound smorgasbord in the first half. 20 offensive rebounds. I mean, I want to climb over the table and get out there and get some offensive rebounds myself. I mean, 20? Nobody's blocking out. Hey, man. Unable to convert. Uh -oh. And bypasses the dunk and just goes with the simple glass finish. Dwight Alcorn State looks tired to me. I think they're just they're running out of gas right now. By the way, you start for the first 12 games of the season on the road, and then you're playing Dayton in the 12th game. I can see where you run out of gas, especially against this Dayton relentless defense. Inside again. Montgomery's found a little rhythm offensively. Found a home. Get inside that three-point line. Make some shots. Seven points, feeds to the Omsiel, and the steal attempt from behind results in a foul, and we'll take a break. 2-0-1, the time remaining here in the first half. Dayton Flyers. That is inside domination. And that's what this team, that's what this Dayton Flyer team is right now. They're an inside-oriented team. Until they can get Smith back, they, get, they can get Elvis back, and get some more perimeter presence. The strength of this team is in the paint. Another missed free throw for Amstiel. He follows up and converts the second. Just six of ten from the free throw line. 60% isn't good enough. Close games in particular, those come back to catch you. Again, Dayton playing this 1-3-1 one, one zone with Kamara out front. This time, Alcorn State did a good job of getting of getting a uh, shot inside and then on the transition Mustafa Amziel and Bruton get all discombobulated with each other yep they got tangled up for sure Amziel three of six goes back to the free throw line converts the first And the second go. Holmes leads all scores with 16 points on 7 of 10 shooting from the floor. Got a couple of free throws as well. Coach Grant sticking with that 1-3-1. One, one. We see Dayton really use the 1-3-1 one, as kind of a curveball. Coming out of timeouts or, you know, one, once or twice possession. They've gone right now exclusively this 1-3-1. One, away from their dominating man-to-man -man. and again another offensive rebound by Alcorn State now the problem is what do you do when you want to get it you got a lot of tall athletic people down there you got a, you got your offensive rebound now what three-point attempt will not go for Amsiel and if, while you talk about the Flyers shooting 50 percent from the floor 14 of 28 uh, they are two of 11 from three-point range the fouls just piling up for Alcorn State. Their 13th foul, the third on Jeremiah Kendall. Holmes at the line. They now 9 of 14 collectively from the charity strike. Pitching left. 
Yeah, that one sat on the flat iron and then rolled in. Take it where you can get it. Inside of the final minute of play here in the opening half, the sold out University of Dayton Arena. Pull up jumper. It's going to go off the right side, bounces once. And out of bounds, possession to the Dayton Flyers, 48. Point nine, the time remaining here in half number one. Another foul by Alcorn State, this time Dontrell McWhorter. Essentially pushed, looks like Blakeney in the back, out of bounds to try and get another offensive rebound. The 14th personal foul by Alcorn State in the first half. He might be uh, measuring the manager over there for a uniform because they might be running out of players at this pace. Well, they had a reputation of being an athletic team coming in the door, and, and I think we've seen that. I think you're right. They're getting close to the end of the half, and they're just running short on fuel. 16, now about 17 free throws for Dayton in the first half. That is a bushel full of free throws. 12 of 17 collectively. In the half-court offense. So these Alcorn State guards are going to have nightmares with Kamani Kamara after this game because he is terrorizing them up front with his long arms on that 1-3-1. One, Three-point three and won't go. And Kamara gets the rebound. Shot clock is off. Expect Dayton to hold for a final shot. Use it or lose it timeout. Anthony Grant going to talk to his team during the timeout that he would have lost anyway. Draw something up and see if he can get his team pace, the same style of play, that high level of play that you know the first five, six, or seven were able to do to keep it to a four-point game. And now it's an 18-point game with a chance to be worse. Brea gets the inbound pass, runs into a little trouble, oh but boy. finds Tom Steele and underneath it, Kamara. And that'll be the last shot of the half state this long distance effort which is well off the mark and we've reached halftime here at the university of dayton arena with the flyers having built even numbers that's a pretty big one for the home team but i think alcorn state they may run out of gas again but i think they'll put up a bit of a fight here at the start of the second half well you saw that start the game i think this starting five for Alcorn State, they did not go down easily. They gave Dayton a little what for. Got to make those shots, boy. You got to make those shots. That was an open shot. And you know, foul first for 13 seconds into the uh, second half is a bad trend. So look at the scoring for Dayton. You, we talked about Deron Holmes as being a star to watch for Dayton. He did not disappoint with 17. First half points and 17 and Kamani Kamara with nine. That is just Dayton just taking it to Alcorn State in the post. 17 points in 18 minutes play. Kamara, a little strong. Goes down to the floor in an effort to get the rebound, but out with it. Alcorn State, Joshua, pull up right side of the free throw line, gets a nice bounce. That's how like Joshua using the fact that Monte Kamara wasn't still on the other end of the court. I don't blame him. Taking a shot without Kamara is a pretty good idea because he takes up so much space with that big body. Stop on field with the reverse. Spinning it off glass. Showing what he can do. Going the baseline with his left and coming back under. Spinning it with his right hand off glass. Just a glimpse of the talent that Lucifer Amzil brings to the table. Joshua again, and this one is uh, turned away. Yeah, you're not going to have much success against Dayton just going one-on-one -on -one against anybody. you got to move the ball around the court. you got to look for cracks. I mean, that's, that's just going up. I mean, Byron John, Joshua is like the smallest guy on the court. That's a tough call for him to go up there and try and make that shot. Back up Dayton. It made seven of 16 from three-point range against Wyoming over the weekend. 
That was the third time in the last four games that they had shot better than 40% from beyond the arc. Tonight, 18%, 2 of 11. 10 on the shot clock. Kamara. <laughs> Again, with a little liberal application of the travel rule. Tamani Kamara, I mean, that's almost unfair. With somebody with that level of skills and all that length, get a couple, get an extra step or so in there. That looked like a travel to me. Open look for three from the corner. Won't go. Transition opportunity for the Flyers. Blakeney. And he's fouled. Slow transition, fast break for Dayton. There is such thing. The crowd, the viewers are out there going slow transition and fast break. I thought it was a fast break. You can have slow, fast breaks. Teams have slow fast break where it looks like somebody's going to stop you but you you slow it up and you keep that transition going and that is the fifth foul against kendall so his night will end early we got his money's worth that is squeezed every foul he could out of those minutes now you're going to see you're going to see i mean dalcorn state's going to have to get into their bench early in this first half and that didn't go well for him in the I mean in the second half it didn't go well for him in the first half of note Dwight is that Mike is not starting the second half coach Grant going with Kobe Bray at the point guard spot neither one of them played terrifically I mean between Mike missed his only shot Kobe Bray was one for four had no assists and two turnovers Mike had you know, two turnovers himself and one assist so neither one of them really played great at that point guard spot but I think coach Grant putting Bray in start this second half mostly on what we saw in that Wyoming performance Kobe Bray had a terrific game at the point guard spot for Dayton against Wyoming really played well I think coach Grant wants to see if he can replicate that nice entry pass and Holmes with the finish and if Wyoming is not going to do more than that to stop Deron Holmes. He's going to have like 60 points in that because that's just way too easy. This shot, one and done for Alcor and State. You know, Charjean and Brea playing that point guard role. Dayton has begun to find themselves a little bit since losing Elvis and Malachi Smith back on November 25th. They've, they've won four or five games without having that true guy handling the ball up the court. That's true. The question is how hard, you know, how hard would they challenge? I mean, you know, who they played, have they really been challenged that great deal? Wyoming, decent team, but with that, they were out there leading scorer. You know, perhaps the best player in their conference again, was Wyoming. So they were an under undermanned Wyoming team, UNC Asheville, at Virginia Tech, southeastern Louisiana, and western Michigan. I mean, I get it. I get the wins, but that's not a test. The team, I think, is going to be tested. If they can't get Malachi Smith and Toby Elvis back, or at least one of them, I think this team is going to be tested in the Atlantic 10 at the guard position. Teams are going to come out, put some pressure on them, and see if they can handle the basketball consistently up and down the court for 40 minutes in transition and in their half court offense. Wade shot from the corner comes up short. Holmes underneath, ball swatted away, and possession will stay with the Flyers. Good defense by Keandre Montgomery to knock that ball away without fouling in the post. A lot of times you see players reach in and commit that foul trying to knock the ball away from a big guy. Inbounds pass, shot for three. Count it. And again, whether it's fatigue or inexperience, that was just poor defense on the out of bounds. Blakeney made the shot, did a good job of, of setting himself and shooting it, knocking it down. But wide open jump shots off the off the inbound play. That is not good defense for Alcorn State. 11 points now for Blakeney, the same as Kamara. Holmes is up to 19, leading all scorers. Another miss for Alcorn State. Kamara, Omsia. Um, 
Lob underneath. And Duran Holmes takes care of the rest. Well, too easy again, just throwing it up to Duran Holmes and letting him go up and do kind of the half dunk. And again, Alcorn State just looks almost like, I mean, it looks like like three minutes left to go in this game, not 15. They just look out of gas. Just 12 games on the road to do that to you. Just inside the arc, that one won't go, but there's a foul called, and there'll be some free throws to shoot when we come back. 14-41 remaining. In the game, University of Dayton. 400. That's a lot. Well, they are thought very highly of by their conference as the preseason poll indicated that they'd be one of the top teams and looking for this long, long, long road trip to, to pay off on the back end. And does your dog even know who you are when you get no. home after that trip? I mean, it's like, oh boy. My wife would have moved on. <laughs> Seriously. Upfield toward the free throw line. Lob in underneath. Good hands to catch. And then the follow up shot from Kamara. It's like Dayton right now is playing over top of Alcorn State. I mean, they, they just said, okay, fine. We're just going to throw it up above you, and you can't come get it because we're bigger and we jump higher. And so Alcorn State's playing with like a glass ceiling of like the eight and a half or nine foot area. And they can't get above it. And Dayton is playing at the nine and a half and ten foot level. Nice finish from Bruton. Monty Kamara bringing the ball to court, showing his versatility there. Ten of the shot clock. Spin move, opposite corner, back out top. Good ball movement, and an open look for three. In and out. Great possession, though. That's a great half-court possession by Dayton. Moving the ball around, unselfish, until you finally get to the player who's wide open for the three. Ball rattled out. That is a great, unselfish, team offensive possession by the Flyers. It's a nice turnaround. Bruton gets another bucket. Dominic Bruton finally kind of making a mark on this game. He was pretty quiet for most of that first half, and now he's kind of getting out there and doing some stuff. Got a little extracurricular in the lane. Between McWhorter from Alcorn State and Holmes. Got tangled up a little bit. I guess it's progress for Alcorn State. They have four fouls in the first seven minutes plus in this game. They had seven in the first five minutes in the first half. Charjean checks in for the Flyers. Kamara and Holmes working a little 2v2 turnaround. That's a tough shot. But how about Kamara on the rebound? Puts it up high off the glass, won't go. And Alcorn State, in the form of Montgomery, comes down with the ball. Length of the court. Layup won't drop for Brute. Lob underneath. Duran Holmes playing at another level. Man, he is just, you throw the ball up in the air. There's only one guy on the court who's going to be able to get it. Perhaps Samani Kamara, but Duran Holmes goes to a different level when he gets up in the air. Full athleticism. Marshall with a two pointer. Inside 12 minutes remaining here in the game. Charles Jean pestered, but keeps control of the ball. Then a little bounce pass in underneath. It's knocked away and will be Dayton Flyers' possession when we come back. Nearing the midpoint of half number two. And Dayton shooting nearly 10 home games to get started. In fact, that's uh, a busy stretch for the Dayton Flyers, and every home win is critical. It's nice to start the Atlantic 10 season with those two home games. You, not, you want to get them off to a good footing in conference play, so that's going to give Dayton a maximum chance 
you say, okay, we're we got wind in our sails and we're playing on our home court. We're going to get a couple wins. Then you got to go three game, three games on the road. That's where hopefully you're going to see Malachi Smith back healthy and Kobe Elvis back healthy, so Coach Grant and practice could get these these guys used to playing with each other in the different roles that they're playing right now and you know, get some chemistry. How about that for a long distance three. He steps outside the locker room, front iron. And Elvis and Smith both on the rehab route and progressing uh, as one would hope. And that's certainly good news. And Coach Grant has done a good job, really good job, of getting this Dayton team you know, prepared to play without those two guys. But, you know, as talented as Dayton is down low, if they, if they don't have Malachi Smith and Kobe Elvis, playing significant stretches of the A-10 season, it's going to be a tough A-10 year for them. Because you just can't, you can't come in. I mean, Mike has, he, he's a talented young man, 6'8", able to play the point guard position, easily, naturally handle the basketball at his size and good passing skills. That's great. Kobe Brea played great, tremendous against uh, against Wyoming in that, in that game at the point guard spot. But you just you cannot play and, 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 and succeed in the A-10 without those two playmakers in the guard spot to date. They've got to get them healthy. Otherwise, it's going to be tough for this team to achieve what I think their talent would allow them to achieve in the Atlantic 10. I mean, you know, this team, one through eight, is as talented as any team in the country when they're healthy. They just got to get healthy. And a great deal of respect coming into the season for the Dayton Flyers and the absence through injury has just thrown them off track, but they appear to be finding some momentum for the last five have been wins. This would be three in a row. Can't go back and change what was. But they've, they've come out to play tonight. Bruton converts. Eight points for him. Coach Grant, you can see, you know, this game dating up 29. Handwriting's on the wall in terms of how the game's going to end. But, you know, minutes, especially for, you know, some of those younger players out there, minutes are crucial for their development. You want as many game minutes as you can get with your, your key guys on the court learning and getting better and getting building that chemistry. At the same time, this Dayton team cannot afford any injuries. You can see Coach Grant trying to walk that tightrope between getting a minutes to play and gain chemistry and experience and you know, opening somebody up to a potential injury. That's why I think you see Brady Yule out there soaking up some minutes for this team at the guard spot. That's, that's just too easy. An Alcorn State, I mean, the car, the Alcorn State car is just kind of like drifting on fumes right now. Inside, nine minutes remaining. <laughs> Long distance three is too strong. Oh boy. Fuel. Holmes, Amsil, got it. Great body control by Mustafa Amsil. And there's a timeout on the floor. It's on. It, it, Anthony Grant's done a great job of, of piecing together the right players on this team that just seem to play well together. And four players, they tend to be a little bit more advanced. Uh, coming out, you know, coming into their first years, I think you see that in Mike, and you've seen that in Mustafa Amzil, I think, was you know, another example of that when he first came in. And it's just, you know, it, it's an option. If you find the right guy, there's, there's international players, if you find the right guy, he can really give you a boost early in their careers, and I think you're seeing that with Dayton right now. A nice play by Mike. Got it blocked going up on that layup, but the presence of mind. To keep his feet, keep his eyes on the ball. So he was able to move closely, get that offensive rebound, and kick it back in. 48 to 6 advantage points in the paint tonight. That's good. You get beat by 42 points in the paint. 
That's brutal. And you only have 36 points. Right. Dayton outscored so far Alcorn State with their points in the paint Again, versus total points for Alcorn State. And that'll be a timeout on the floor as the foul is called against Mustafa Amsil. Floor he does have four rebounds. Just just a difficult night for Alcorn State as the lead has grown gradually over the course of the contest. First free throw as we return to action will not drop for Marshall. And you saw those leading scorers for Dayton, all big guys. We expect that. Anthony Grant's team is pounding it down low like they should because they have the advantage down there. So now, you know, Dayton is just going to come down and continue what's work, get the ball down low. Really forces Alcorn State team to defend in the, in the paint, something they have not been able to do yet. Brady Ewell just got away with the travel. Charge on. Nice pass. On seal. Oh, boy. That's a nice pass by Mike. And Mustafa Amzil, just the flashes of talent that he shows. I mean, that's a that was a tough. He got challenged on the jump shot and drove around his defender with his left hand and a nice little soft kiss off the glass around two players defending him. That was just that's a rare play. It's hard for big guys to make that play. He makes it so easily. You now tired legs just can't get anything to drop at this point. Out for in state. Palm field, that's a good block. Excellent block. Marshall doing his job defensively. Just north of six minutes to play. From the baseline to the opposite corner. And out of bounds. You know, Dwight, it's certainly been a dominating game inside for Dayton. I don't want to sound like a negative Nelly, but... When you look at the play of the point guard position, you know, it hasn't been exactly what you want. I mean, you've got Mike, you've got Kobe Brea playing that position tonight. Those guys combined two of eight from the field, one of six from the three-point line, five fouls, two assists, four turnovers. That's not good against Alcorn State. It's not good. And it is not A-10 good. I mean, it's going to be tough. Now, Brady Yule is going out there and say, okay, I'll, I'll better. I'll get the stats a little bit better with a draining a three. But you know that combined performance from Mike and Kobe Brea, essentially sh uh, splitting up the point guard duties. That's not going to cut it in the A10. It's just not. And so that's why this team needs to get Malachi Smith back. They get Kobe Brea back, and or and and or they've got to get. Mike and, Co and Toby Elvis back. They got to get Mike and Toby Brea to play more consistently in this position. So when they're playing against a team that is better than Alcorn State, they have better production, and those big guys don't have to carry the entire scoring. The coach is going to be up watching film on that late night, going, "Holy smoke! You know that's a tough defense to to go against." And a lot of teams are going to be practicing against that 1-3-1 because that is a formidable defense as a change-up. A change-up for Dayton, which plays a, a tremendous man-to-man -man defense. That 1-3-1 can really cause havoc for, co for teams. Teams are going to have to practice against that in practice. And it's going to be hard for them because they're not going to get the same look. Great outlet pass by Omsiel here. And a good, good block by Ladarius Marshall, eventually the KG getting fouled. But teams, look, in practice, teams going against Dayton can't simulate Tamani Kamara out there in that point playing the 1-3-1. They don't, nobody, ha nobody else has a 6'9 guy with long arms, super athletic, who moves as well as he does and is aggressive defensively. So it's going to be hard for teams to simulate that in practice. And that 1-3-1... I think you're going to see more and more of that as the 8-10 goes because it can be a really effective defense combined with that gate lockdown man defense. Alcorn State running their offense. Um, the Flyers on the floor working very hard defensively. 
15 on the shot clock, 420 to play. Oh, right. Tough shot won't go. Blakeney with the board. Yule for three. He's hot. Give him the ball. He's hot. That brought a nice little smile to the face of Anthony Grant. Brady Yule showing it's no fluke. <laughs> I didn't make that shot deep in the corner on some fluke. I earned it. I can do it again, and he did it. That's always great when you have players like Brady Yule coming off the bench and getting production, getting playing time, and performing. Something, something about that, that helps the team. That your team just comes around players like that, comes around opportunities like that. Feeling it, not this time. I think the roof of this place would have come off if that had gone. Yeah, I have a feeling Coach Grant might be saying, hey, Brady, okay, first two I got it. Third one, you better make that one. In transition, early in the shot clock, let's work it around, big boy. Shot clock down to five. Three minutes to play. Shot needs to go up. Alcorn State forgot we were playing this game with a shot clock. Unable to convert on that possession. The shot clock expires. Mark, you got Wilkeji out there. Mike needs all the minutes he can get as a freshman, especially playing that guard spot. Blakeney, you know, fairly seasoned veteran. A red shirt sophomore, but you know, his opportunity to show him, mean, he's always been an excellent defender. His opportunity to show that he can do some things on offense, and you know, that's a, those are important spots for him because you want you want Coach Grant, if you're Blakeney, you want Coach Grant to feel like you can you know, offer up some plays for maybe Blakeney, get him in some crucial offensive situations where he's out there making shots not just playing defense so key minutes for him and Amzil every time you get Mustafa Amzil on the court those are key minutes because he's just you know he needs more time to get consistent suddenly an Alcorn State fouling frenzy So Joshua picks up his fifth. And a technical foul is called. I'm not sure what you're getting a technical foul on 82-38. I mean, what's not the official's fault? You're down on this 50. Just ran into a good team with good big guys. And again, we just in defense of this Alcorn State team, they, they just seemed tired. They just seemed tired. They came out chipper and ready to go. Gave Dayton good efforts, good runs in the first you know, 10, 12 minutes of this game, and then just the truck ran out of gas. Get him by five. Sharp jumps, two points on the night, one of four shooting. Missed one three-point attempt and his first trip to the free throw line. First is good. Char jumps for his second. And he gets that. Even just on his free throws, you see Mike with that soft touch. He's got great ball talent. I mean, just both handling and passing the ball. The shots are very natural and smooth. This, this young man's got great potential. I think you're going to see him in a couple of years. He could be a very, very good player for the Five on the shot clock. Fakes one way, turns the other to wait, and that shot rattles through. An athletic effort at a dunk from some distance. Free throws. 
Nice pass by Mike. Will KG goes up to the rim. Says shortest distance between two points. Straight line. And the first is good. Deep racking up the free throws. Now 20 of 25. 21 of 26. That is terrific. And they were struggling earlier in the game with the free throw shooting, but it's really come to roost here in the second half. You need that little boost of free throw confidence going into A-10 play. Confidence play free throw. Free throws are crucial. Good block. Crucial. You got to get the line, especially on the road. Tough conference play in the A-10. You got to win games on the road. A lot of times you win those games from the free throw line, being mentally tough and stepping up and making shots. We're going 21 or 25 before you start conference plays. A great way to get your confidence, you boost your confidence in that free throw strike. McCorder with the basket. Now Blakely for the flyer. 90 seconds left. Ball is knocked away. Transition opportunity. A little up and under as Charjamps went by and another bucket for Wade. A little example of how thin this flyer bench is. I mean, Dayton up 44. Three of their starters for the game. That's not because Anthony Grant's trying to pour it on. There's anybody left. That shot won't go. Inside the final minute here at the University of Dayton Arena, where the Flyers will wrap up the non-conference portion of the season. Uh, undefeated here at the friendly confines. They will take a little bit of time off the practice for a 10 competition begins Christmas Day. Christmas Day games, those are always fun as a player. What about Christmas Day practice? Oh, those are all awesome. And you gotta love those Thanksgiving and Christmas practices. Nothing better than that. So they will allow the score to remain as it is, as the time will run out. Alcorn State can head home. 88-46.